and th that, that was very important. Um, for the last sort of five minutes I've been talking more about things of what's been happening at the top, but the whole time that this sort of process was happening, the, the real fundamental changes are being driven in Nepal, not at the, the issue of at the level of, of negotiations and things between different parties in the parliament, but at the, the grassroots level. And this was my experience in Nepal when I was there last year. Uh, I saw some of these institutions being built and, and, and popular activities that have driven this whole process forward and made it possible. Uh, I spent about two weeks almost in with the People's Liberation Army. Uh, the, the People's Liberation Army are currently in cantonments. Uh, they are under supervision by the United Nations, but that is, uh, involves, I think, three people uh, from the UN are just sort of sitting in a hut in the tent in the, uh, the, the, the camp. Um, they, they, yeah, they just sort of sit and watch. Um, as you can see, they're very much not disarmed. Those are very, very much real weapons. <laughs> Yeah, these two women both were from rural areas in Nepal. Uh, one of them joined after she, her parents had tried to arrange for her a, a, a make an arranged marriage, and she sort of um, didn't think that was uh, very appropriate, and uh, decided she'd go off and join the revolutionaries in the hills instead. Um, yeah, both of them I think were, were studying at the time. Uh, there's a real conscious effort by the, the revolutionaries in the camp at the moment to to study and, and better themselves. Uh, again, these three guys. Um, were part of the yeah, are, are in the camps. The books in the foreground are all uh, textbooks. Um, a lot of the combatants don't uh, didn't have the opportunity to to study or go to school, particularly not at high levels of education, uh, before they joined the Maoist movement. Now that they're in the cantonments, uh, as well as training every day, uh, they use their spare time to to study and, and to, uh, to to learn and to, to improve themselves for the new Nepal. Um, this guy's name, I think, was Sarala, I, I forgot, um, oh, Sarala Sonia. Um, but the picture above him is his brother. His brother was killed a few years ago by the military during the People's War. Um, and while everyone, and this sort of comes back to, to why they're sort of studying, uh, everyone, you know, or, or many people I met in Nepal had, lo met, uh, had lost friends or family members during the, the uh, insurgency. Um, but there was a, almost a, there, while there was a lot of mourning and a lot of sadness around that, there was a universal optimism about the, the direction that things were, were moving. People were very optimistic and, and they were all excited about the prospects of Nepal because, because of the first time they had uh, had the opportunity to write their own constitution. And so they had for the first time that people in Nepal had uh, felt that they had uh, the ability and, and to interact and, and set the agenda and, and achieve the, the goals that they sort of were aiming to achieve. Uh, so yeah, and that sort of goes in like why they were all studying too, because they wanted to make the best of it and to contribute as much as possible to uh, a new Nepal. Uh, there's also a lot of frustration in the camps at the moment that they've been there for two years and that the, an integration hasn't happened and, and they've sort of been sitting around twiddling their thumbs. Uh, this is a, yeah, the, a lot of the most thing, a common answer I got when I asked people, you know, what, what do you want to be doing? They said that they wanted to be out back in the countryside building the road, building the hospitals, building the schools the country so desperately needs. Uh, they wanted to be in a new army, but they didn't want to be sitting around with, with big guns, you know, waiting to go fight somewhere. They wanted to be out doing meaningful development uh, tasks. Uh, in a small way, this is part of it. This is the cantonment in the hospital. Oh, sorry, the hospital in the cantonment. Um, it's not much, it's very basic, but for a lot of the local people, which this hospital is open to, uh, it's the first sort of medical attention that they've really had access to. Uh, it's got a big focus on uh, maternal health and, and uh, child health sort of stuff, uh, as there's big problems of, with uh, childhood mortality in, in the poor or uh, maternal mortality. Uh, it's, yeah, it, it's got basic facilities there, you can go and uh, see a doctor. I myself got really sick when I was uh, in the camps. I um, had some pretty bad uh, food poisoning from chicken. Um, but I sort of went up there uh, feeling like crap, got some, uh, I think it was antibiotics from, you know, saw a doctor pretty much straight away, got some antibiotics, it cost me, I think, 30 rupees, which is, you know, a matter of cents, uh, less, than, uh, less than a dollar. And, uh, and it's sort of open to, yeah, to, to the public, it gives them uh, somewhere where they can get uh, health care. And I think I've got the only, you know, medical certificate in Australia that has marks and Lennon at the top, which is uh, <laughs> interesting. But, uh, um, again, and so the, like the biggest changes that are the most obvious at the moment uh, in Nepal are the uh, social sort of changes. Uh, the pictures are a bit hard to see, but this is a, a couple. Uh, the man on the left is a Dalit from the low caste sort of families. Uh, the, the woman on the right uh, is uh, from a, an eth a different ethnic and national group. Um, 
that would this, this the fact that they've got together simply would not have happened a few years ago. The, the, like someone from a low caste would marry outside of their caste was, was not considered even close to to a, a realistic sort of possibility a few years ago. Um, and further, the, the, the like that sort of made this uh, unity, uh, this marriage uh, exciting was the fact that um, the roles within the, the, the marriage and within a lot of the, the families and gender roles have really been uh, challenged and, and, and rocked pretty hard. Uh, when I was there, she was again. She was studying to. She had some exams in a few weeks. She was studying very hard, and he was looking at uh, the primary care for their child. Um, you saw that a lot with uh, Maoist uh, in sort of pre progressive families. There was a, a, that real sort of changing of uh, of, of roles in, in the family and, and, uh, and that sort of stuff. And particularly in the camp, there was um, yeah, you know, a cooperative sort of uh, dishing out of, of chores. And, and you know, I, I saw. Uh, women going off to cut wood and, and men sitting together, like playing with the little kids. It, it was really sort of good to see that sort of the challenge of the, uh, their gender roles. Again, um, haven't been disarmed. Um, again, there's also been a lot of talk that the Maoists are terrorists. They're a uh, listed terrorist organisation in, in the US. Um, there's been, especially from the, the uh, mainstream political parties, there's been a lot of talk that uh, their activists are, are targeted by the Maoists that there's human rights abusers, that there, um, and particularly the cantonments, which is the, the in the background, uh, are, are bases where they'll sort of congregate and go out and beat up other activists, and, and there's supposedly a culture of fear in the countryside where people can't be open about their politics or whatever else. The flag in the foreground is the uh, flag of the, the, the UML, uh, the, the one currently the, the government, uh, the, one of the parties in the, the current illegitimate government. Um, beat up other activists and, and there's supposedly a culture of fear in the countryside where people can't be open about their politics or whatever else. The flag in the foreground is the uh, flag of the, the, the UML, uh, the, the one currently the, the government, uh, the, one of the parties in the, the current illegitimate government. Um, yeah, if you can hang your flag 50 metres from the gate of a PLA camp, I think that sort of shows me how hollow these claims of, of, uh, of, uh, of oppression sort of really work. Um, yeah, in, uh, in Rolpa, th th this is in, in Rolpa, Rolpa was one of the, the key sort of areas of male support during the, the insurgency. Uh, this road doesn't look like much, and in a lot of ways it isn't. It is full of potholes, it's um, very windy, it's a bit shit, and uh, it's very susceptible to man's life. Um, but this road had takes, uh, it's only, it was built by the, uh, by the, the revolutionaries uh, during the, the People's War. That's how they referred to it as the Martyrs Road. Uh, it literally, uh, for some people, uh, they go through areas where there was no transport at, at all previously. And it literally can take up, up to a week off the time that it would take some families to get in to see, to, to a major urban centre to get medical attention or, uh, you know, take their goods to the market or to, to collect go to better educational facilities or, or whatever else. It's things like this uh, that have been really, that are already starting uh, an economic revolution in Nepal in a lot of ways. Uh, it was organised by the Maoist and, and made by like their their activists as well as the local communities, um, and it was through you know, the Maoist organising the communities to do the work to provide tools to provide other you know different uh, expertise at different times to come that it empowered the communities to, to, to do their own uh, development work. Um, it's also uh, interesting to note that uh, there were people who worked from different communities that uh, worked on this road that the police and military arrested for working on the road and used that as proof. Um, that they were terrorists and were, uh, there's even cases of people who were shot purely because they worked on the road. And uh, I think that sort of shows how oppressive uh, the, uh, the military and the police were during the war when you couldn't even work on a project in your own village that would improve your life without being grounded.